How did the universe begin? And what happened in the first billionth of a second after the Big Bang? What unsolved mysteries shape the behaviour of our universe? Could space have more than three dimensions? And if so, why can't we see them or move through them? Dark matter could determine the future of the universe, but how can we tell what it is? And how will a five billion pound experiment provide answers to these questions? Deep underground, beneath the French-Swiss border, thousands of physicists and engineers are busy putting the finishing touches to one of the largest and most complicated scientific projects ever attempted. The project is housed at CERN, one of the biggest physics research facilities in the world, and it's called the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. It's a gigantic particle accelerator, and when it's switched on next year, it will collide particles at such immense speeds that the energies released will simulate the state of the universe just after the Big Bang. To start with, let's find out what the LHC is and how it will recreate the conditions just after the Big Bang. Okay, so um, the LHC is a circular accelerator with a circumference of about 27 kilometers. Um, and it goes more than 100 meters underground as it goes around. And in the tunnel, there are two beam pipes which carry the protons in opposite directions. Inside these beam pipes, scientists will be accelerating protons, which belong to a class of particles called hadrons. The protons will reach breathtaking speeds. Or in other terms, you can say that this beam at 7 TV will have 0.9999999 and something, eight nines times speed of light. The protons in the two beam pipes will travel in opposite directions. Once they're forced to a high enough speed, they will be smashed together in head-on collisions. And so what we're doing is, by bashing these particles together, we're creating these very high energies, um, and that allows you to use Einstein's e equals mc squared to make particles with very high masses. Such high mass particles will have decayed during the life of the universe, and so we no longer see them. But in the LHC, we'll recreate them, we'll study their properties, and therefore find out how the universe is constructed. When protons collide inside the LHC, the resulting energy densities will be as high as in the first billionth of a second after the Big Bang. A huge number of fresh particles will be formed from the energy that's released. The behaviour of these newly formed particles will provide vital clues to help scientists answer major questions about the universe. But to pick up these clues, they must measure the paths and energies of the particles. The measurements will be made using giant experimental detectors positioned around the LHC tunnel. At two locations there are very large pits, about the size of any cathedral, uh, which have the two general purpose detectors in Atlas and CMS. Behind me in this cavern is the Atlas experiment, which stands for a toroidal large apparatus. Uh, CMS stands for Compact Neon Solenoid Collaboration. Uh, it started by a handful of people, and today it stands at about 2,500 scientists and engineers. ATLAS and CMS are the largest of the detectors inside of which the two beams of protons in the LHC will be allowed to collide. When the collisions take place, uh, you see lots of particles coming out, but these particles don't always come out in a kind of random way. They come out in a characteristic way that one can identify certain features associated with those events that make it possible to identify where they come from. So, the LHC is a huge tunnel which will be used to collide protons together inside massive detectors, two of which are called ATLAS and CMS. The collisions will produce highly energetic particles like those that existed just after the Big Bang. But what exactly do scientists hope to find out by studying these collisions? Of the many strange and exciting aims of the LHC, perhaps the most important is to prove the existence of the mysterious particle called the Higgs boson. This particle is a key part of a theory that scientists have been developing for over 30 years. The theory, called the Standard Model, ties together our understanding of how most of the physical world works. Since the 1970s, particle physicists have measured a lot of properties of the fundamental particles and forces 
the universe. And our understanding is encapsulated in something called the standard model. Um, and the standard model has two elements. It has matter, which are the things we're made of, and forces, which are the things that hold the matter together. The most important questions that we all try to answer with CMS and, and LHC are whether the standard model of particle physics is correct. I mean, it seems to be astonishingly correct, and yet we haven't discovered the one thing that really is missing, which is why the particles have mass. One challenge for the researchers who put together the standard model was to explain why some particles in the world around us have mass, while other particles have no mass. The explanation that was developed relies on a particle called the Higgs boson. In order to give masses to some particles, but keep others massless, uh, you need some way of breaking the underlying symmetry of the model. So one idea for doing this is that the, uh, the vacuum, what we think of as empty space, containing absolutely nothing, in fact does contain something, and the stuff that it contains breaks the symmetry between the different particles. And the field in the vacuum which causes this is called the Higgs field, and the ripples in the Higgs field are called the Higgs boson. But the particles actually interact with this Higgs field, which pervades the universe, and acquire mass. And uh, the stronger the interaction, the higher the mass. So uh, imagine that you're in some uh, cross-country race, okay? And if you're running along a, a smooth track, you can run very fast, right? But then suppose you come to a field of mud, okay? Now, you tend to sink into the mud because you, your shoes, your running shoes, interact with the medium and you get slowed down. Okay, so the idea will be the same for elementary particles, that some particles act as if they didn't have any interaction with the muds whatsoever, they just sort of skated over the top, okay? Other particles though, their running shoes, if you like, sink into the mud and those particles get slowed down. So those slower moving particles, those have larger mass, and that's the way the Higgs mechanism works. The analogy of particles running through mud illustrates the key ideas of the Higgs mechanism, but the full details of the process are more involved. And inside the quantum vacuum there can be fields, and the hypothesis is that one of these fields, is called, which is called the Higgs, has a preferred direction in an imaginary space. That is, it prefers certain types of particles over other types of particles, depending on their weak interaction properties, technically what's called weak isospin. And the Higgs field at high temperatures doesn't care about which direction of weak isospin it chooses. So it looks just like the inside of a ferromagnet. There's no preferred weak isospin direction, and therefore the particles all look the same to it. And whether they have a weak isospin like this, which might make them into a Z boson, or a weak isospin like, like this, which might make them into, say, a photon, um, they have because the situation is symmetric, there's no effect of that, and they both look the same, and they both behave the same, and we have a unified force, the photon and the Z behave the same way, um, and we have massless particles in the theory. But if we cool the universe down, the Higgs field decides to choose a direction, a weak interaction direction, just the same as the magnet does. And once it's chosen that weak interaction direction, now it cares whether this particle points this way, in which case it looks like a Z, or whether it points this way, in which case it looks like a photon. The Higgs mechanism is an essential part of the standard model, but the ripples in the Higgs field known as Higgs bosons have yet to be discovered experimentally. Scientists hope that collisions between protons in the LHC will allow them to observe Higgs bosons for the first time. So the way that you do that is to create uh, collisions with extremely high energies. And then the energies of the incoming particles you can convert using E equals mc squared into the mass of a very heavy Higgs particle. After they're created, Higgs bosons won't survive for long enough to be observed directly, so their existence will have to be deduced from observations of the products of their decay. So, are the scientists confident? Atlas has been optimised since the beginning to make sure that we can find the Higgs under any circumstances, if it's a standard model Higgs. I'm pretty optimistic that uh, the experimentalists will find something. Whether it's exactly what Mr Higgs predicted, I don't know, but they'll find something. Uh, if the Higgs boson exists, and as postulated, the LHC will definitely find it.